case. Now, in the future homework, you will be doing the equivalent of this, this calculation here with the Laplacians. Uh, it's not complicated, so that you will derive what the current is. And the current must be a very similar formula as this one. And indeed, I'll just write it here. The current is h bar over m, the imaginary part of psi star. And instead of ddx, you expect the gradient of psi. That is the current for the probability in three dimensions. And the analog of this equation, d rho dt plus dj dx equals 0, is d rho dt plus divergence of j is equal to 0. That is current conservation. Um, perhaps you do remember that from your study of electromagnetism. That's how Maxwell discovered the displacement current when he tried to figure out how everything was compatible with current conservation. Um, anyway, that, that argument I'll, I'll do in a second so that it will uh, become clearer. Um, so uh, one last thing here. Uh, it's something also you can check. The units here of j is um, 1 over L squared times 1 over t. So uh, probability. See, per unit area and unit time. OK. So what did we have? We were doing the integral of the derivative of the integral given by n. It was over here, the n dt. We work hard on it, and uh, the n dt was the integral of d rho dt. So it was the integral of d rho dt dx. But we showed now that d rho dt is minus dj dx. So here you have integral from minus infinity to infinity dx of dj dx. And therefore, this is, I should have a minus sign, because it was minus dj dx. This is minus the current at x equals infinity and t minus the current at x equals minus infinity and t. And as we more or less hinted it before, since the current is equal to h over 2im psi star d psi dx minus psi d psi star dx. As you go to plus infinity or minus infinity, these things go to 0, given the boundary conditions that we put. Because psi or psi star go to 0 at infinity, and the derivatives are bounded at infinity. So this is 0. The n dt is 0. All is good. And uh, two things happened. We, in the way of doing this, we realized that the computation we have done 
pretty much established that this is equal to that because dn dt is the difference of these two integrals and we showed it zero. So this is true and therefore we suspect h is a Hermitian operator and the thing that we should do in order to make sure it is is put two different functions here, not two equal functions. This work for two equal functions but for two different functions and check it as well and we'll leave it as an exercise, a good exercise. But uh, so the, this shows the consistency, let's see, but we discovered two, two important ideas, two ideas. One, their existence of a current current for probability ability. and two H is a Hermitian operator. So, okay, so last thing is to explain the analogy with current conservation. I think uh, this should help as well. So, the interpretation that we'll have is the same as we have in electromagnetism. And there's a complete analogy for everything here. So not for the wave function, but for all these uh, charge densities and current densities. So, so we have electromagnetism and quantum mechanics. We have rho. Here is the charge density. And here's the probability density. Probability density. If you have a total charge Q in a volume, charge in a volume, a volume, here is the probability to find the particle in a volume in a volume. There's a J in Maxwell's equations as well, and that's a current density. Ampere's law has that current, generates the curl of B. And here is a probability current density. Probability current density. So that's the table. So what, what I want to make sure is that you understand why these equations like this or that are more powerful than just showing that dn dt is zero. They imply a local conservation of probability. You see, there has to be um, physics on this thing. So the total probability must be one. But suppose uh, you have the probability distributed over space. There must be some relation between the way the probabilities are varying at one point and varying in other points so that everything is consistent. And those are these differential relations that say that whenever you see a probability density change anywhere is because there is some current. And that makes sense. If you see the charge density in some point in space changing is because there must be a current. So, 
thanks to the current, you can learn how to interpret the probability much more physically. Because if you ask what is the probability that the particle is from this distance to that distance, you can look at what the currents are at the edges and see whether that probability is increasing or decreasing. So let's uh, see that. Suppose you have a volume and you define the charge inside the volume. Then you say, OK, does this charge change in time? Sure, it could. So dq dt is equal to integral d rho dt d cube x over the volume. But d rho dt by the current conservation equation that's the equation we're trying to uh, make sure your intuition is clear about. This is equal to minus the integral of j, um, no, of divergence of j, d cube x over the volume. OK, but then Gauss's law. Gauss's law tells you that you can relay this divergence to a surface integral, dq dt is therefore minus the surface integral, the area of uh, the current times that, uh, so I'll write it as minus jda, the flux of the current over the surface that bounds. This is the volume, and there's a surface bounding it. So by the divergence theorem, it becomes this. And this is how you understand current conservation. You say, look, charge is never created or destroyed. So if you see the charge inside the volume changing, it's because there's some current escaping through the surface. So that's the physical interpretation of that differential e equation, of that d rho dt plus divergence of j is equal to 0. This is current conservation. And many people look at this equation and say, what? Current conservation? I don't see anything. But when you look at this equation, you say, oh, yes. The charge changes only because it escapes the volume, not created nor destroyed. So the same thing happens for the probability. Now, let me close up with the statement in one dimension, which is the one you care. Um, at this moment more, at least. And um, on the line, you would have points A and B. And you would say the probability to be within A and B is the integral from A to B dx of uh, rho. That's your probability. That's the integral of psi squared from A to B. Now, what is the time derivative of it? dPAB dt would be integral from A to B dx of d rho dt. But again, for that case, d rho dt is minus dj dx. So this is minus dx dj dx between b and a. And what is that? Well, you get the j at the boundary. So this is minus 
j at x equals b t minus j at x equals a t. So simplifying it, you get d p a b d t is equal to minus j at x equals b, or I'll put just b t plus j of a t. Let's see if that makes sense. Um, you have been looking for the particle and decided to look at this range from A to B. That's the probability to find it there. We learned already that the total probability to find it anywhere is going to be 1, and that's going to be conserved, and it's going to be no problems. But now let's just ask even what happens to this probability in time. Well, it could change because the wave function could go up and down. Maybe the wave function was big here, and a little later is small, so there's less probability to find it here. But now you have another physical variable to help you understand it, and that's the current. That formula we found there for j of x and t in the upper blackboard box formula is a current that can be computed. And here you see, if the, if the probability to find the particle in this region changes is because some current must be escaping from the edges. And let's see if the formula gives it right. Well, uh, we're assuming quantities are positive uh, if they are, um, have plus components in the direction of x. So this current is the current component in the x direction. And it should not be lost, maybe I didn't quite say it, that if you are dealing with the divergence of j, this is djx dx plus djy dy plus djz dz. And in the case of one dimension, you wouldn't have those and you get this equation. So it's certainly the reduction. But here you see, indeed, if the currents are positive, if the current at B is positive, there's a current going out. So that tends to reduce the probability. That's why the sign came out with a minus. On the other hand, if there's a current in A, that tends to send in probability. And that's why it increases it here. So the difference between these two currents determines whether the probability here increases or decreases.